second event uh, was not quite as, um, well, it was bad, put it this way. If you notice down here, uh, Wallace used to be called Duplin Roads. Uh, it was located on the old Duplin to Raleigh Road, it was called at that time. When you cross the creek, the road splits. You know, the one way goes through Wallace 117. That's not the actual route, but it's close. The other way goes up in C11, up north towards uh, Kenston and Newbern. That was the old way. Colonel, um, Lord General Cornwallis' troops uh, came through again in October of 1781. And the account I have read from Clerk of Court in Duke County at that time, Colonel William Dixon, uh, it was just horrible. Not as, now this is, to me, <clears throat> Interesting. It was not as much the troops as it was the followers of the troops. These misfits and I don't know how you describe them. They were. They came along and they were the ones that brought the people and uh, burn houses, and stole livestock, burned the crops, everything. They were the, really were the bad, the bad guys in this thing, well, especially through Duke County anyway. But that last day came through, did all this damage, went on the Cornwallis, of course, in October of 1781. He was on, his troops were on the way to Virginia, to Yorktown, and defeat, which we all know what happened next. Those were the, basically the two uh, instances that, uh, during the Revolutionary period of time. The growth was uh, a little bit slow for the camp where Wallace or Duplin Rose at that time, and, um, William Boning uh, was here. He was said to be the first merchant to set up shop in Duplin Roads. Uh, this was a little bit before the railroad came through. I've got my railroad guy right here. The railroad began uh, in 1834 in Wilmington. Uh, it was to go to Raleigh. It never made it to Raleigh. But it had a, the people in the, the officials in Wilmington and the people in Raleigh had disagreements. And so they changed the course by the time they got up to the little town of Clayson up in northern Duke County. It took a big curve in the road. A shortcut across the old ocean swamp and right on to Weldon. And then it was changed to the Wilmington and Weldon Railroad. It was, as you can imagine, probably this uh, saving grace, if you will, for the economy and uh, of Duke County at that time. Once that got here, uh, instead of the people having to float their naval stores products down the Northeast Cape Fear River right out here to Wilmington to sell, everybody know what naval stores is? Uh, British Navy could not survive without the naval stores industry to steal the ships to make them watertight to grease the ropes so they wouldn't rot. And it's what the Navy survived on was the naval store industry. And it was tremendous here in this area in southeastern North Carolina. I read an account one time, I wish I had known and saved it, that um, in the early 1700s there were people who well, looking at the new land, and they started walking as everybody did back then. And they described what they saw on the walk from, from our area here all the way to the central part of the state and even to the mountains. And they said the whole countryside was covered with huge long leaf pines. And you could, I have to paraphrase it, okay, said you could walk on the ground on about a foot or two of nothing but pine straw. No underground, no nothing, just miles and miles and miles of only pines. Just beautiful pines. Gone now, very few left. Um, the railroad, you know, merchandise and transportation increased dramatically with the railroad, of course. The We'll jump ahead a little bit. I read an account, a diary that was written in 1852 of a lady getting on the, the, 
train in the little town of Tichy. She wrote in her diary, it says, this new railroad is much faster and much quicker going to, they're going to Southport on the railroad. And what they changed at that time, before 7, 1852, when you made a railroad, the agent can verify this, they made big planks out, and on top of the planks they put flat iron strips for the train to roll on. In 1852, they changed that to what you see now, the T iron, or the track, the train don't say, and the speed increased, brakes were increased, and it just made a tremendous difference in how the transportation of this part of the world evolved. The train jumping up in the Civil War area, of course, the Wilmington and Weldon Railroad was known at that time as the lifeline of the Confederacy. How many Confederates is here? <laughs> <laughs> The, the, the train carried, uh, it brought the merchandise from the British ship sailing into the port of Wilmington with supplies. They loaded the supplies for the military operations for the Confederacy on the train. Troops rode the train, both Confederate and Federal prisoner troops rode the train back and forth from, from here to the battlefields in Virginia and beyond. And uh, there was one story I read where right after the war was over and there was a, a soldier coming back home and he said when the train slowed to cross Rockfish Creek trestle down here he says I jumped off and I walked home <laughs> and he walked about 20 miles now to over to Sampson County to go home. You know, it's amazing being how people walk back then. <laughs> 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 they, they didn't play much golf. Right? <laughs> Speaking of the Civil War, I was going to use this if I, if I got into the Duplin County history, but uh, I'm not. We were, uh, in 1862, there was a, 1861, there was a, a gentleman in Wilmington by the name of Louis Freilich, F-R-O-E-L-I-C-H. He was a German immigrant. He was a metal worker for the most part. And in Wellington, he made um, accoutrements and uh, equipment for the Confederate's army. And one of the things that he made there were swords, cavalry officer swords. Yellow Fever came in about that time, and he relocated his business up to Cannonsville. His dark highway marker up there now is the Confederate Arms Factory. Mr. Freilich continued his operation there, making Confederate uh, swords and made things like buoy knives and uh, buttons and knapsacks and you name it. It was burned in July of 1863 when Colonel Lewis and the federal troops had come all the way from Liberty to tear up the railroad of all things in Little Town of Warsaw. <clears throat> they ran across the uh, armory of Mr. Fralix. They torched it. They <coughs> found the um, I don't know if he was a mayor or a punch mayor at that time, got his safe, who his name was Mr. Alsi Sullivan. <coughs> found his safe and it was locked. So they drilled holes or cut holes at the top of it and they blew it open. And it, I don't think there's anything in there, but we still have that safe. <laughs> sure do. Nothing with us. Okay. It's in the Veterans Museum up in Warsaw. Uh, back to the arms factory. Um, I brought with me. Y'all are circling and come up and look at this later. Mr. Prolick's swords were highly unusual. They were rare. And one of the reasons for it, I don't know if you can see it back there. You see in the, in the um, group right here? What does that say? Can you see that? We can pass it around. Sir. Pass it around. Don't point out. What did the market do today? The guard on the thing is made by three initials C S A. There you go. The Federal States Army. It's the only one you'll ever see like that anywhere. And 
There is an original, and that's a replica, of course. The original, one of the originals is in Liberty Hall in Kenansville. We didn't have one original. And I was told if you wanted to buy one, about $30,000. <laughs> no, it's, it's a price. Is that Confederate money? Yes. <laughs> Guess who was postman? Uh, both of them. <laughs> right, right, right. How close did Sherman cover the walls? General Terry's troops came, right, well, they came through, but they took the route. Um, I don't know if I, can just, if I can tell you the route, but they came close. They came and they encamped above it. At Colonel Dudley Hill's plantation, which is about two to three miles east of Faison. It's burned now, gone. I have a picture of it. It's a big, beautiful plantation. And he's, uh, they, about 10,000 of his troops stayed there. Now, Sherman's troops stayed, I don't know if you're familiar with the geography around here and all, but if you leave Faison at the stoplight and turn left, like you can go into Raleigh to Highway 50, uh, you go down and turn right. Go up into Sampson County. Before you get to Sampson County, there's a creek called Panther Creek. And Sherman's troops are all camped in there. And that's a, a whole other story about what his troops did up in the basin area. <coughs> which we don't want to get to. <laughs> Anything else before we go? Make it easy. <coughs> The, um, in the middle to late um, 1800s, um, businesses were growing. There were a lot of what we know as general stores. I know, I'm not sure everybody has been to one of these old general stores somewhere in some state. Okay, they were 